Hi, this is Kaden Chang. I'm the founder of Mind Kinesis Value Investing Academy. So for the past few weeks, and uh, if let's say you've been reading the news or surfing on Facebook, you have realized that a lot of people are talking about the presidential election in the US between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. So what's it got to do with this video that I'm going to do today is because uh, due to this presidential election, a lot of my friends who are not in the world investment, they were asking me what kind of business uh, should they invest in. If eventually Donald Trump become the president, would the share price go up or will the share price go down? Or on the other way, uh, or let's say on the other hand, if let's say Hillary Clinton is being elected as the president, so will the share price go up or will the share price go down? And not only this, I... You know, when, when I was uh, playing around with my, with my Facebook, uh, there are also people who, who were saying something like uh, if, uh, they should invest in some of the Donald Trump's company so that in case if Donald Trump uh, get elected, the share price of his company uh, is going to go up. Now, for those people, if let's say your thoughts is along this line, I just want to uh, give you some, some small little reminder uh, in a way that the stock exchange is not a casino. So our intention in investing in the stock market is not really to guess whether the share price is going to go up or go down based on whatever election results or, or economy or anything that's happening. Now, one of the key reasons why most people lose money because they, they don't really understand what the stock market is all about and what do we mean by investing in a stock. Now, if you are able to understand uh, what I'm going to share in the next couple of minutes, that will, that will really save you uh, not only a lot of money, uh, a lot of time, and it's going to save you a lot of uh, bad emotions. So before I jump into like what are the things you need to look out for, whether who, whoever side uh, win the uh, presidential uh, election, uh, I'm going to bring you something uh, very, very basic. Now, so how does the stock market work? Remember, if you're able to understand this, it's going to save you a lot of agony. Now, before we talk about how the stock market works, let me go back to the fundamentals of, of what lies within the stock market. So whether you're looking at the Singapore Stock Exchange or, or US Stock Exchange, now every single entity that lies within the exchange is a business. It's not a number that you guess whether it's big or small, or even up or down. Now, let's say I put it into a Singapore context. Now, let's say after you, you work for a couple of years, you decided to start a, start a business, just an example. So you start a business. Now, in Singapore context, when you start a business, there are many forms of legal entity. So let me share with you the, the, the few common ones. Actually, there are many. So let me just share with you some of the common ones. Now, if you, if you first start out, let's say you want to be a hawker. So your business entity may be registered in ECRA as a sole uh, proprietor. So this is one common legal entity, a business entity in Singapore. And some people, if they do not want this, they may choose to start a partnership uh, with their friends. And partnership, there are, there are a couple of types. So one type of partnership is called a limited liability partnership, LLP for short. And the one that's been commonly heard in the Singapore context is this business entity called a private limited. So private limited. So whether is it a sole proprietor, whether is it a limited liability par partnership, whether is it a private limited, remember all these entities are private entities. So in other words, you cannot go to the Singapore Stock Exchange and want to buy the stock of this sole proprietor, LLP or the private limited because all these are privately owned by the business owners. So different entities have their own advantages and disadvantages, but I'm just going to put this thing aside. So let's say you own <coughs> a business. An entity is a private limited. Let's say uh, you together with your, your business partner. So you start a business and then private limited and then you're doing very well. And you wanted to expand very quickly. So in order for you to expand very quickly, there are a couple of ways. So remember, expansion requires a time, a human effort, and one thing is, of course, money. So if, let's say, you want to raise money to grow your company very quickly, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, one way, maybe you decided to take the profit uh, from, from your company, uh, reinvest, and then you grow. So this is one way. So if you realize that the amount of money is not enough, you may want to consider certain things outside the scope. You may want to borrow money from your friends, your parents, anybody you want to know, and then plow it back to the company, and then you grow the business. <clears throat> so this second way. Another way is you may borrow money from, from the bank. But of course, if you borrow money from a bank, there, there's an interest charge. So you have to pay interest to the bank. So this is the third way. And, and recently in Singapore, there's this concept uh, which is very popular where you, you sell your, your shares to the members of the public so that you can raise money and then eventually uh, grow very quickly. Now, so in order for you to sell these shares uh, to the members of the public, uh, <coughs> of course, there are many ways uh, to do it. But one of the very popular ways is this thing called the, the IPO. 
Now, IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. So as the names imply, you're offering the, the shares uh, to the members of public uh, for the first time, which is why initially. So, this is <clears throat> so if let's say you go through uh, this route and you decide to raise money through an IPO, okay, so from private limited, you raise the money uh, through IPO, and eventually after the IPO process, your company, your ABC private limited, let's say, will become uh, ABC limited, and it's going to be listed in the stock exchange, depending on which stock exchange you want to list a company. Now it can be in SGX, it can be Australian Stock Exchange, it can be Hong Kong, it can be the New York Stock Exchange, and so on. So the companies that, that people buy and sell in the stock exchange have gone through this process of IPO. Now some of the companies you may be very aware, let's say Facebook. Facebook initially was a private company, so they went through IPO and then they become a public listed company. And the, the other company is Alibaba. Alibaba, this one you know, is founded by Jack Ma. So in the early days, uh, people don't really know about Jack Ma because his company was private limited until it becomes one of the, the, the biggest IPO in the entire uh, U.S. history. So it got listed. And you realize that after it got listed, the Jack Ma become extremely rich. Why? Because he's, he's selling his, his shares or offering his shares to the members of public so that you can buy, buy the shares uh, in the stock exchange. Now, so going back to the question about a Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, whoever win, what kind of stock uh, you supposed to buy, should you buy this, should you buy that? Uh, but before we answer that question again, just hang on, just be patient with me. Now let's go back to this company called Private Limited. Let's say, the, let's say this company is not you, but you are an investor. And then you, you have a put sum of money in line in the bank doing nothing, and you have always wanted to invest in the company. Then you came across a very famous chicken rice store. So every single day you'll be eating in this store for, you know, you eat, you eat in the store, and the next day you eat in the store, and you realize that every single day the, the, queue, the, queue, the queue for this chicken rice store is really long, uh, so that the, the, the owner is really making a lot of money. And then one day, the owner decided to sell this business away. Uh, and then you're waiting there, and then you've got power money, and then this fella wants to sell the business away. And then just like two of you start to meet, and then you, you, you chit-chat each other, and then negotiating for a deal, and so on. So my question to you is this. If let's say you have a sum of money, a huge sum of money, and you want to take over this famous chicken rice store where the business is really good and has been good for the past 10 years. So my question to you is this. What, when you sit down together with this owner, what sort of question would you ask? Now, in case you're just pondering, I just share with you some of the questions that usually pops up during my lesson. Now, if let's say you're an investor, you may ask, hey, you know, you're opening a chicken rice store. Uh, what is the total asset that you have? For example, the machinery to make the chicken, or whatever equipment that's around, the cash that the business have, or maybe there's some trademark pattern or whatsoever. So you ask things like, oh, how much assets do you have? And you may ask things like, hey, have you owned anyone any money? Whether is it a bank, whether is it maybe the land that your shop is being sitting on, are you owing anyone any money? And if let's say you may prop even further, you may ask the owner, hey, can you just show me your income statement? How much money has you been making for the past five years, ten years, since you started up this uh, chicken rice store? And then you may, the, the list goes on. You may ask another question, A, what makes your chicken rice so unique that you can sell one plate for $8, let's say, when people are selling for $2.50? And you realize that even if it's $8, people are still queuing up to buy a plate of chicken rice for, for $8. And you may continue this question, and then until you are fully satisfied. So after you, all your questions in your mind about this chicken rice store is fully answered, of course, the next question you may ask is, hey, how much are you selling me this chicken rice store? So first one, you ask about the business much money makes and so on. And then only when you're satisfied with this, then you ask, hey, how much are you selling me? And then in, in your mind, you, you, you have an estimated a number. And this estimated number, usually people use a word and they call it a valuation. So whether a startup company or whatever, their intention is to really grow and then increase their valuation. So in your mind, you have a certain uh, valuation. Now, so let's say the valuation is here. Let's say the valuation is you estimated in your own way, you calculated, let's say it's worth one million. And then the boss of the chicken rice store decided to sell you uh, for half a million. So in your mind, you, you calculate it as one million and then he's selling you for half a million. So I'm right to say that this is the valuation. The half a million is below the valuation. So to you, uh, if you're really an intelligent investor, do you consider this as a cheap investment or an expensive investment? Remember, the estimated worth or the valuation of the company is one million and it's selling you at half a million. So I'm quite sure most of you will find, hey, maybe this is cheap, this is a good deal. So what happened is, is let's come back to here. First category of question you ask is re, re, regarding the business. Second category of the question they ask is regarding uh, how much are they selling. 
and then you, you make reference to your own evaluation. So these are two sorts of questions you ask if you want to invest in the business. Now, but the magical thing happens. Now, the moment, when you're at this part, uh, human beings tend to be very logical, very rational. You look at the business, how much is the valuation, you want to buy deeper battery and so on. But the, but the magical thing happens in the sense that when a company goes from a private company, uh, goes through this process, IPO, and then eventually get listed in a stock exchange. Now, investors or human beings don't ask these two sets of questions anymore. They don't ask whether the company is making money, what's so special about business and so on. Uh, they don't ask what's the valuation of the company and then they want to buy below valuation. valuation. They don't ask these two categories of questions anymore. So what question do they ask? They will be looking at the stock price for the past one week, one month, and then one year. For example, oh, the share price up and down, up and down, they're looking at the share price. And then instead of looking at whether the business is making money or not, valuation, they just look at the share price all day long. And then after they look at the share price, they attempt to predict what, is, what will be the share, share price in the next five minutes, in the next one week, in the next one month. Now, by the way, if, if prediction of stock price is so simple, anybody can come out with software, and the software engineer will become a multi-billionaire. So things are not as simple as, as looking at share price in the past and then attempt to, attempt to predict in the future. Now, why is that so? Because the movement of share price short term in the past will never equal to the future. So it's like tossing a coin. Now, if you toss a coin, 10 times it turns out to be hit. Does it mean that the 11th time you'll be hit? Now, the answer is no. Why? Because the, whether it's hit or tail, for the first 10 times, and then hit or tail in 11 times, they are mutually exclusive. They are independent of each other. So which means that if the share price go up, it doesn't mean the next one minute the share price is going to go up. But human beings, uh, by nature, wanted to create a pattern out of randomness. It's like looking at a cloud, and then you, you, when you look at a bunch of clouds, you say, hey, the clouds look at rabbit or tortoise and so on. Now, one of the key reasons why uh, most people, they lose money, because, because they assume when they enter into the stock market and buy a stock, the stock is like a number that wiggles up and down, wiggles up and down in every sec single second. And because you create a pattern of randomness in the past, you tend to predict in the future. And then you say that, hey, if the past has been going up, the future should be going up. Now, if, if this is as simple as that, uh, must as well go to the casino in Singapore and then just bet on and even uh, left or right, uh, big, big or small, because it's really not so simple. So, so, so if this, this doesn't work, if this doesn't work, so what works? Now, going back to the question they asked, what work is, number one, all the fundamentals about the business. Is the business making money? What's the assets? What's the liabilities? And hold this a question. So once you answer this question, then the next, next question you ask is, is what is the estimated valuation of the company? If the company is worth one million, it's a great company, at what point do you make entry to, to take over the chicken rice stock? Do you want to take over when it's above valuation or do you want to take over below uh, when it's below valuation? Obviously, you only want to invest in a business when it's cheap, which is below how much it's worth. So this is, the, <coughs> this is the one key important thing that if you really want to uh, make some money out of the stock market, you have to start from the fundamentals. Because only when a company do well, then the share price will go up. And of course, on the other aspect is only when a company do well, when you invest in a good company, at night you can sleep peacefully. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that I have a huge group of people who's waiting outside, probably there are like 80 or 90 or close to 100 people that's waiting outside. And we're going to start our seminar on, uh, on investing soon. And this evening, we are running a no-profit, no-sales event called the Autopilot uh, Investing Workshop together with two of my uh, very, very wonderful graduates. And I'm going to start the seminar quite soon. I can see the whole gang. It's really outside. So I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to stop this video right now. And if you have any question, you can always post it. Uh, you just comment in my Facebook status. And if you really want to understand more about investing in stock, which it simply means by buying a business, uh, please go to triplew.valueinvestingprogram, uh, the shorter program, P-R-O-G-R-A-M-M, uh, sorry, P-R-O-G-R-A-M.com. So www.valueinvestingprogram.com. So www.valueinvestingprogram.com. So I wish you great success in your investment journey. So I'm Kaden Chang from Mind Kinesis Value Investing Canada. Thank you. You have a great evening.